Hello, my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I want to thank all of you subscribers out there. We're up to 288 and over 8,000 views. Today, we are going to be discussing uh, a topic called Guided Tours, which came about, uh, I believe, in Jakarta. Uh, we have here a couple of things in the application menu, which I wanted to point out. So the modules we have here are Create Tour, Guided Tours, Configure Auto Launch, and Guided Tours Overview. Now, the overview is not really an overview at all. It's really uh, a dashboard with uh, some reports in it. So that's what I'm going to start off with because I feel that uh, most uh, uh, implementation specialists out there, what they'll do is they'll just dive in and start um, creating the tours, and then later on they'll say, well, we need some reports, and they'll forget that this tours overview is there, and they'll try to build them on their own. And it really just creates a lot more work than is necessary. So right here we have two tabs. One is overall statistics, and it looks like we have some single scores up here. We also have some bar charts. Uh, you'll notice I made these. Um, I enabled the accessibility on these for the 508 compliance. Uh, I do have a video on this, which you can reference. Um, and then there's some other neat little reports down here. So all this stuff kind of lines up. Then if we were to go to the tour statistics tab, uh, we'll see here that we have these line items and we can expand them if we want and it'll give us certain information um, For us to take a look at if we want to look inside the record um, We just click on the eye here, and then we could even open the record from here So next we have uh, create so if we click on create tour, it'll take us into here and I just said you know what let's create one we're going to call it guided tour because it's basically going to be on the guided tour list. So we have here uh, admin and this SN tour builder user role. Now, one thing about this is that these two are acceptable for building guided tours. There's also another role, I believe this is around before, called embedded help admin, uh, which you can use that too, but you need to have access to that application. So that's one thing I wanted to note. So if we hit create, uh, let's see here. Oh, it's not valid. No. Okay, so let's try this. Sys embedded. Uh, oh, it's two D. So I always forget that. And then tour. And then we're gonna do list, right? Uh, that's step. Ah, uh, we can do step list. I guess. Here we go. Guide list. That's what I want. Okay, um, let's hit create. And that's gonna be one of the purposes of this session today um, is to show you what not to do because one thing I wanted to experiment with is uh, the different types of call outs that we have over here and the steps um, and see if I could, and my approach to building applications um, or things of this nature is to kind of break them first um, to see all the possibilities that are out there. And one reason I do that is so that way, in case I run into an issue with, because um, this happens constantly, where you take over someone else's work, um, they transition out, you come in, and then you encounter an issue and you have to troubleshoot it. And I feel that up to 50% of a developer's workload can be dealing with these issues um, from previous um, work that was done. Not that that's anyone's fault specifically. We do have upgrades and and. Uh, obviously, there are, there are changes that happen, so there's not always system compatibility going forward. So, um, if we want to do something like a call out, um, we just drag and drop this over here. And I'm going to show you the difference between something like this and this in just a second. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of this one, and I'm going to go over to the one that I've already made which is called, um, I don't know, I think I called it SLA information or something like that. So they already had one on um, the SLA table, uh, which uh, kudos to ServiceNow, thanks for thinking of that, uh, because SLAs are very complicated, and on my channel you'll see there's quite a few videos regarding SLAs. So I created a whole bunch of different steps here. You'll see number one is kind of up here, um, and then if I click on these, it brings out the call out, call out box, excuse me. So if I click on one, and you'll see one's actually right here, and I'm gonna show you a problem um, that I noticed. 
Um, and also, there, there is uh, this example in the documentation of why you have to be careful and look at the highlighting when you're bringing these things over. Uh, this one was done okay, and then on down the line, I created about 12 of these, or 13 of these steps. Now, one thing you're going to notice here with the highlighting is that these right here all the way to 6, uh, 7 through 10 are a different color, and the reason for that is that they're not displayed. So if I take this to start condition, now you'll see they're, they display, and then 12 and 13, uh, they, they change back to, um, I guess it's black background with the white text. So that's one thing to note. Also, one thing, another thing to note is that you have to tell the user and in your instructions what to do. So for example, going back to number one here, uh, putting this in there is not very helpful. Not here, click on the hamburger. What the, what the user needs to know is what needs to be done. So let's also say that you put one of these shapes in here, let's just say number five, and you want to change the shape, you just click on this right here. And one thing you're going to notice uh, with the, the, the change here also is this underneath there, the actions, right? You're going to know right away whether you're uh, inside the actual box or whether you're outside. And what I mean by that is um, if I take this right here and I put it on days, and I hope this shape fits, it does, okay. You're going to see here, trigger next step on next button. Great. So that's the only thing you can do. Now, if you want it, it, it to be interactive, and this goes back to planning, right? So when you're putting one of these things together, um, just don't do what I just did, which is just throw these things in there. You want to plan this out, and the number one question you want to ask is, what do you want the user to get out of this? And also, how do you want to approach, or how do you want the user to approach this? Do you want this to be totally interactive where they click, or do you want them just to read this stuff and kind of go through it? So um, now let me take this shape and put it in here. Uh, it's probably won't fit. See, uh, so that's that's good right there. Let's try this one. No, it won't fit here either. I guess we'll have to do this. There we go. Okay, so, and that's also a great example too, is that it's not going to show you the shapes that will fit in there um, until uh, you actually start trying to put them in there. And after you do that, then you can have this call out placement right here. At least this is what I found. Maybe there's another way to do it. Um, but look at all the, the actions that you have here. See how it's vastly different? So that's going to give you a hint right there whether um, this is what you want it to do or not. So um, let's go ahead and play this thing. And I want to show you some, some really awful work here. So that way you don't repeat these steps uh, when you're creating your own. All right, so here I am. And one thing I've enabled um, is the auto function for this thing to actually just go through. And I think that, okay, here we go. So the arrow is pointing here. So what does the user do? They're probably going to click on this arrow, and guess what it's going to do? It's going to pull up this form again. That's not much help, and you know what it's going to do? It's going to run this thing one more time. So the text box should show up. My apologies, my system's rather slow. Um, and, and they'll just be put in sort of like an infinite loop, right? So if I go back here and I look at number one, what does it say here? Trigger next step on right-click the element. So if you're on a PC, you have to right click, or if you're on a Mac like myself, you do the two finger click. So that's one thing that you need to make sure you have a good handle on. I could also have the next button in there, which would be very helpful. Um, so one thing I'm going to do is I'll just right click and then see it moves to step number two. So we'll just move on. I'm gonna show you some more awful work here. So yes, it's the hamburger. Um, I'll click on that. And then it brings us down here for step number three, which is next. And then I started putting in my YouTube videos for the different, because I basically chopped up this form, so to speak, and then I did different YouTube videos on them for the SLAs. So then if I want to go to next, I'm just going to kind of go around here, and you'll, you'll see that um, one thing you need to be careful of, which I'll show you in a second, is that when we go to, uh, here's going to be a good example. So remember that my, uh, my next steps were in the start condition tab. I purposely wanted to do this in a tabbed form to show you that 
the next step isn't found because the system isn't going to ratchet over to the start condition. So what happens here is that, and we can, we can fly through this just one more time. I'm going to reload this page. And we'll just take it from the top. So now I have the start condition on here. So it should pop up. I'm going to right click. And then I'm just going to go through these. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Do you want to stop this tour from launching it? Uh, no, I don't want to stop it from launching it. I want to do it again. So let's uh, reload that form. Okay, let's take this away. Next. And now you see sometimes, I don't know what happened here, but I tried to uh, put this over here and for some reason it ratchets all the way over to the right. So this is some, some pretty sloppy work on my part, but I want to, again, I want to do this on purpose to show you what not to do. And you should also test these thoroughly to make sure that this is uh, the visual that you want your... Um, you, you want your users to experience. Okay, so now I believe I'm gonna go over to the reset condition. Nope, let's hit next. Okay, so now it says click on the tab. Now, I'm saying right here to tell, I'm telling them, look, click on the link. Here's the problem with this. If I click on the link, it brings me to, it, to the user help. Just make sure that's what you want it to do. So remember that this is an active form here. And I just want to show a couple of things that, that, that can go wrong really fast. So uh, then moving over, um, we'll see here, this is the list of all the out of the box plus the ones that I've, I think I only made one of these or updated a couple of these. But there are a lot of them here that um, are out of the box, which are really great. So you'll have examples here. So uh, my unsolicited advice would be to um, go in here and maybe copy one over or go through it and try to use a template um, to get you started. Uh, so then if you were to click into one of the, uh, like this SLM definition configuration tour, which is um, out of the box, so we'll notice here we have the active check mark. So you can deactivate these also. And also you can, uh, you can um, assign specific roles to them too. So then in here you'll have all your steps and you'll notice here with the order that they space it out a little bit. Kind of like you do with variables when you're creating a service catalog or, or fields. You definitely want to pay attention to the order. Um, and then kind of go through these and take a look at them. Um, and if we were to go into one of them, like this SLA retroactive start, we'll see here, um, if we want to change the content from here, we can do that. And there's, there's a whole uh, bunch of other stuff we can do down here, which I might actually save for, for another video. So then, let's say we want to configure the auto launch. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, um, if you can help me out uh, getting subscribers, I'd really appreciate it. Um, I'm up to almost 300 and my goal is 1,000. So I uh, really need some help uh, getting subscribers. And then also, um, if you're an organization out there that's either looking for some ServiceNow expertise, I am available. Um, also, if you want to sponsor the channel, I am accepting sponsorships too. So uh, with continuing on with the configure auto launch, you can filter it by name if you want to. So I guess if we type in contract, we have contract SLA. Uh, we could also filter by most recent or by name. And I'll take the filter off right now. And then if I were to open this up, go to the next tab here, we'll notice that SLA information is auto launch ready, right? Because it's, it's green or there's a color there. Um, if I turn this one on too, what I can do is change the order of them. So if you wanted to do multiple tours, uh, because maybe you have one really long tour and you don't want your users to just exit out of it, you'd rather chop it up into pieces, um, this is a good approach for doing that. And then um, I just showed you the functionality, but basically what the auto tour does is, and we can reload this form, is as soon as you roll into it, you get into the form, uh, it will automatically go into the tour. So 
because this one's just wrapping up. So uh, we could pick whichever one we wanted to, and um, let's just do that one more time. Okay, so yeah, it starts out with yes, this is the hamburger. So this is um, th this is a good uh, lessons learned for what not to do with guided tours. So I hope that helped you um, helped you a little bit with getting together uh, the different things that you should be planning. And remember, that's the focal point. You want to really plan these out, and also ask yourselves what should the user get out of this, and what should they experience. I'm Jason Miller, founder. Aspen Now Solutions, and we just unlocked the power service now. Thank you and have a great day.